Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Monday the 17th of August. It's good to have your company as we begin this new week of being able to hear the words of scripture and to be able to pray together. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's compassion. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so, the Lord, so is the Lord merciful to those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone. And its place shall know it no more. For the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old and endures forever on those who fear him. And his righteousness on children's children on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments to do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 71 O God, be not far from me. In you, O Lord, do I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send out to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence even from my youth. Upon you have I leaned from my birth, when you drew me from my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of you. I have become important to many, but you are my strength and my refuge. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. My enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say God has forsaken him, pursue him and take him, because there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all the day long, for I know no end of the telling. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O oh God, when I am old and grey-headed, till I make known your, needs to the, your deeds to the next generation, and your power to all that are to come. Your righteousness, O oh God, reaches to the heavens. 
in the great things you have done, who is like you, O oh God. What troubles and adversities you have shown me. And yet you will turn and refresh me and bring me from the deep of the earth again. Increase my honour. Turn again and comfort me. Therefore will I praise you upon the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing out as I play to you. And so will my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also will tell of your righteousness all the day long. For they shall be shamed and disgraced who sought to do me evil. O God, be not far from me. Be Lord, living Saviour, in youth and old age, from the womb to the grave, may we know your protection and proclaim your great salvation to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is a continuation of our reading from the first book of Samuel, today reading chapter 24. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took three thousand chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road, where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost, innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterwards David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. And Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand. For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness. But my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt well with me, in that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me therefore by the Lord, that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. So David swore this to Saul. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. Here ends our first reading. Song of Deliverance All the earth shout and sing for joy. 
For great is your, in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. The Lord my God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Our second reading we continue to hear from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 11 to the end. When, while he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran to get together to them in the portico, called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You will listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be... And it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out from the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken, from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets of, and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, And in your descendants all the families of earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you, to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David, through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, <clears throat> to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, 
and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. So let us pray. So today, as we watch the news and read the papers and see things online, we pray for all those areas of our world which are battling new spikes of the coronavirus, where outbreaks are happening. We pray, Lord, for swift action and that people would keep to the guidance and rules to keep each other safe. We pray for our own area here in the northwest, where we are facing the increased restrictions. We pray for the work of the authorities in making those decisions and for those who have to enforce them. We pray, Lord, that out of respect and love for one another, we would try to keep each other safe. We pray for those who are battling the virus through their work in vaccinations, cures and tests. We pray, Lord, that you would give them skill and knowledge that they need to provide these things for the whole world. We pray for those who are battling the virus in hospitals or out in the community. And we pray for those who are battling the virus because they're unwell. For those who are struggling. For those who find themselves in a hospital. Lord, we pray for an end to this virus. An end to the restrictions that we have to live under. An end to all that has become to feel normal. And we pray that we may safely be able to live our lives once again to the fullness of life that you have given us. As we pray for our world, we continue to pray for your gift of peace, for an end to warfare and conflict wherever it is found. And we pray for all those who are involved in monitoring and protecting our natural world. We pray for ourselves as stewards of this world that you have given us. We pray for those who care for the environment, who try to protect endangered species of animals. And we particularly pray for those who are looking for ways to enable sustainable and eco-friendly tourism across Lancashire and the North West. Help us to know, Lord, that the small changes that we make have a larger impact across our world and on the environment and that we should be encouraged to make those changes today. We pray for our government and for the leaders of all nations, for those who have to make decisions. We pray for those who are waiting their GCSE results this week and for those who are still trying to sort out their A-level results. We pray, Lord, that you would bring your peace to them and calm their anxieties and fears about the future. We pray for those who lead the church, for the Archbishop of Canterbury and York, for the bishops of our own diocese, for Bishop Julian, Bishop Philip and Bishop Jill, and for our archdeacons Mark and David. We pray for their wisdom and guidance and for the support that they provide for the parishes and people that they care for. We continue to pray for our key workers, for all those who go out to work, for the many thousands of people who have kept the country going, who've worked in infrastructure and behind the scenes. We pray for those who've worked from home, for the way they have tried to keep colleagues safe. We continue to pray for those who are still furloughed, and for the frustration that they feel. We pray for those who have gone back to work today and are returning to work this week. And we bring to you, Lord, all those who've lost their employment or whose employment is under threat due to this pandemic. We pray, Lord, that you would support them and help them to find work. 
And so we pray for the work of the NHS and all those involved in medical care. We pray for those who work on the front line and those who work behind the scenes. For those who are the upfront people and for those for whom they would not be able to do their job without them. We pray for those who support them. For those who've made great sacrifices over these past few months of being separated from family and friends like so many of us. We pray for our hospitals, for the hospices, for our care homes and those who go out into the community to provide care at home. We pray for our health centres and GP surgeries and pharmacies and for all those who provide medical care for those who are in need. And so we bring to you, Lord, those who are in need of your healing touch today, for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, those who long for an easing of their pain and peace of mind. We pray for Bridget, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, David, Morris, Margaret, Mary, Marion, Joyce, Irene, Jeff, Edna, Alan and Andrew. Lord, be with them and all those that we name in our hearts and minds today who are in need of that healing touch. Pray for their families and friends who care for them and those who look after them this day. So we pray for those who have died. Praying especially for those who've died this past night. For those who've died recently and those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Lord, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have gone before us and help us and all those who mourn to trust in your promise of eternal life where one day we will be reunited with our loved ones once again. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to us such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of morning prayer. It's been good to have your company and I hope that you have a good day today, whatever today may be bringing you in terms of work or rest or leisure or all the many things you've probably got on the list somewhere. Do stay safe, keep well, look after yourselves. We have a service of evening prayer at five o'clock if you're able to join me for that. But in the meantime, you remain as always in my prayers. Do take care.